Hey guys, this is Neon for Clownfish TV, and I think we're looking at the potential end of Twitter. Yes, Twitter, which has been around for about 10 years now, has become sort of the social platform of preference for a lot of left-leaning creative types, uh, left-wing artists, etc., etc. And it looks like they're turning on Twitter. The reason they're turning on Twitter is Jack Dorsey, CEO Jack Dorsey's, decision to allow Alex Jones, right-wing conspiracy theorist, to remain on Twitter because he hasn't violated any terms of service. So because of that, a lot of people on Twitter are talking about leaving. In fact, they have August 17th is D-Day. They're talking about deactivating their accounts on August 17th. Deacta Day, hashtag. Uh, now this is actually coming from uh, Will Wheaton, who is uh, essentially, I think his career is is now is kind of uh, been revived because of uh, Twitter, if I remember correctly. But he's got close to 3 million followers. He is really not happy about how Twitter has handled uh, the Alex Jones situation. Um, and he's talking about, uh, he did an experiment this weekend that his life was better off without Twitter. You know, a lot of people, I think, would be better off without Twitter. We've talked about uh, the Twitter outrage mobs. You know, Twitter is the place where every celebrity gets called out for something, right? We just talked about uh, Batwoman actress Ruby Rose being called out uh, on Twitter. That so It was so bad that she actually left Twitter. But she might have left on the 17th anyway, <laughs> the way that people are talking. But Will Wheaton is not very happy with this. Of course, we're going to turn this into... Uh, kind of a, a, a political grandstanding moment. Um, you know, Twitter has already been sort of uh, overtaken by uh, left-wing political types. It has been for the last couple of years now. It used to be a place where uh, normies, like everyday people, would sort of congregate and tweet at each other. I know when I first joined in, I think it was 2009, it wasn't long after Twitter started, and, uh, you know, I, I started uh, tweeting art and whatnot, and that's pretty much what it was. I mean, there was some casual conversation back and forth. People would post uh, funny cat videos or pieces of art. Uh, it wasn't very political. It's only been the last couple of years that Twitter has gotten um, very political and has become a very, very toxic place. Although I might not agree with the reasons uh, that these uh, celebrities and pseudo celebrities are, are leaving Twitter, I do agree with the sentiment that Twitter has become a very, very toxic place social media platform probably the most toxic out there in my personal opinion uh so many people's careers have been killed because of twitter outrage and we're finding out in hindsight now that it's faux outrage it's not it's a very small uh, percentage of people who are kicking up a lot of noise on social media and the mainstream media has paid attention to them now that they're sort of uh, Twitter sort of on the wrong side of the politics of mainstream media, it will be interesting to see how long the platform lasts. So here's Will Wheaton. Of course, Will, this account mocks fascists. Wheaton, basically, Will, this account mocks Republicans and conservatives. Uh, Wheaton, <laughs> I logged out on Friday and spent the whole weekend being present with my family, creating art I care about, pretending to be an adult and not having the angry hate machine buzzing in my pocket. Yeah, that's a good feeling, actually. Uh, my small experiment says life is better without Twitter. Okay, well, I think he's better suited for Tumblr because this goes on and on. Um, it's a real shame that Twitter's leadership doesn't seem to care about the hateful people it empowers and enforces its own terms of service so unevenly, giving preferential treatment to high-profile people like Alex Jones, who have clearly broken that same TOS. Uh, the Alex Jones thing is the last straw for me. Every other social network has rightfully removed that awful man's ability to use their platform to spew his hate, to attack and hurt people like the Sandy Hook parents, except Twitter. Why? I believe it's a failure of leadership. So, okay, I'm going to stop right there because I actually tweeted as soon as uh, the news broke that uh, Dorsey was not going to uh, kick Alex Jones off of Twitter because as far as Twitter was concerned, Alex Jones uh, did not break their terms of service. Uh, the first thing I tweeted was, uh, this is probably the wrong platform to take that position on. Dorsey will get eaten alive by Twitter's own outrage mobs, which, in my humble opinion, he helped create in the first place. Uh, because I think that a lot of the outrage started in 2014, 2015, about the time that Jack Dorsey took over. RIP Twitter. And now going back to Will Wheaton, uh, calling basically calling for the ousting of Jack Dorsey. It's a failure of leadership. Um 
yeah, so this we're going to see more and more of this from uh, very far left celebrities because things did not go the way they expected them to go. I'm just posting this here for the few of you who care. I'm planning the few of you. He's got three million, three million followers. <laughs> I think there's more than a few. I'm planning to sign out and stay signed out. Uh, and unless uh, unless Twitter follows the leadership of other social networks and says enough is enough to Alex Jones and people like him. Uh Twitter is a private business and can decide, can decide who and what it promotes and enables. This is true. There are certain things that just should be outside the bounds of a civil society. Attacking parents whose children were murdered uh, should be one of those things. Yeah, I, I mean, just for the record, I don't agree with the things Alex Jones says, but that's the issue with free speech is that it kind of has to work across the board if that is uh, you know, what you subscribe to. Um, and Twitter is basically saying he did not violate any of our terms of service. Um, so Twitter used to be fun. Yes, Will, I completely agree with you. It was a potential force for good in the world, but it's become the social network equivalent of that cool punk club that was taken over by skinheads. And I don't want to be part of it anymore. Um, no, actually, what? The social network equivalent of that cool punk club that was taken over by skinheads. Nazis, Nazis everywhere. And I don't want to be part of it anymore. Uh, so a bunch of us are hoping that... Who's a bunch of us? Okay, so a bunch of us are hoping that Twitter will take Alex Jones' hate and cruelty and flaunting of Twitter's own TOS seriously and ban him. If you want to join us, um, you can go here and see uh, Shannon Coulter. Okay. Uh, thanks for listening. If you just can't live without my dumb jokes, resistance posts, and pictures of my pets, uh, I'll still be Instagram and Facebook. Uh, counter at counter.social uh, and Tumblr, of course, willwheaton.net. So Will Wheaton with 3 million uh, Twitter followers is is prepared to leave Twitter over Alex Jones. The um, thing is, is that in this case, I actually don't disagree with him quitting Twitter. I think more people need to quit Twitter. I think Twitter has become, uh, for both sides, has become an absolutely toxic uh, cesspool of a social media platform. I think it's, it's sort of brought out the worst in people. It's as I keep it trying to to talk to Geeky Sparkles about. It, it reminds me of having ESP and and uh, hearing the thoughts of people that you really overhearing the thoughts that you really don't want to hear. Like I think Twitter has done so so much damage uh, to interpersonal relationships, to uh, you know some kind of peaceable agreement between political uh, ideologies, to careers. We've seen many careers tanked over Twitter, uh, and a lot of it coming from, uh, outrage mobs, you know, the outrage mobs, uh, you know, they will tar and feather people on Twitter that they don't like, that don't subscribe to their politics. So, you know, again, I'm saying I don't disagree with Will Wheaton. I think everybody should actually turn off Twitter. We're sort of on the fence. I'm on the fence as to where to go, uh, post Twitter. Um, you know, we're kind of looking at maybe doing some more with Discord uh, to try to connect with our YouTube followers. I mean, really, you people are the people we really care about keeping in touch with uh, on Twitter. I mean, I've already been blacklisted by so many comic book people at this point just for following and talking to people they don't like. And uh, this is a kind of madness that you can see, especially in comics Twitter. Like, I've seen the decline firsthand. We, we've been on Twitter since pretty much the beginning. And uh, it used to be such a nice neighborhood. I do agree with Will Wheaton on this. It used to be a nice neighborhood. And then politics. Politics happened and everybody lost their freaking minds. So um, here's a story yesterday. It was posted by Bounding in the Comics, which I think is one of the few uh, uh, balanced uh, comic book sites out there. I highly recommend going to Bounding in the Comics. But they're talking about how uh, so many people in comics now see... Uh, Nazis everywhere. Anyone who's a conservative, anyone who's right of far left has apparently become a Nazi, a fascist, uh, including yours truly, uh, even though normally I support Democratic candidates because of my slight association with people that they don't like, I've now been labeled a Nazi as well, which is pretty freaking disgusting <laughs> if you actually knew me in person. Uh, Eric Larson, who, you know, is one of the founders of Image, and he's sort of their unofficial spokesperson. He's always out on Twitter making comments, um, has come out and said... Uh, like, like, I mean, these are just ridiculous comments. Instead of reading between the lines, why not read the fucking lines and take them at face value? Conservatives get all kinds of all kinds of work. He's talking about working comics. 
Uh, actually, that is not true. We did a video on that. I can pretty much debunk that uh, just because of the numbers and the way it works. There's just a lot of liberals in comics and there always has been. Um, that's never not been the case. But if you start publicly advocating that transgender people be marched into gas chambers, you're on your... Wait, who... Who has said this? This is coming from Eric Larson, spokesperson, uh, well, unofficial spokesperson for, for Image Comics founder, one of the founding members of Image Comics, saying things like conservatives, uh, you know, if you start publicly advocating that transgender people be marched into gas chambers, you're on your own. Nobody has said that. Nobody has ever said that. Are you mental, Eric? Like, these are the kinds of tweets that make people want to leave Twitter. And there was a, a sentiment, I think, that people were leaving Twitter before uh, Will Wheaton decided that it was cool to leave Twitter because he doesn't like Alex Jones. Again, bounding in the comics. Can you identify anyone you believe is acting like a bleepity bleep Nazi? Eric, no. So what are you bitching about? I said, if... You act like a bleeping Nazi. You may find work drying up. That is a threat. Uh, it was a cautionary statement advising people not to do that. Eric, no one has said anything about marching transgender people into gas chambers except you. Uh, and also, you shave your head. Hmm. Maybe you're a Nazi, Eric. I don't know. <laughs> Secret Nazi. Um... So, again, he goes on, uh, people certainly have said shitty things which have set back their careers. That does happen. I agree with that. There are people who have shot their mouths off and tried to blame it on politics. Uh, this is true. This is very true. Now, if you go to the uh, Bounding in the Comic story in question, you can see some of the, uh, some of the things that uh, prompted this discussion. You know, Eric Larson, yeah, if you act like a bleeping Nazi, you may find work drying up. Don't be a bleepin' Nazi. Has history taught you nothing? Now, Jim Gibbons, uh, former Dark Horse editor, Jim Gibbons, uh, also joining in straight up, having a transparent combo with potential collaborators about how I don't want to work with secret Nazis, secret Nazis, so they better be cool with touchy-feely comics about acceptance and, you know, not be secret Nazi. What is a secret Nazi? Who is a secret Nazi? Who is talking about sending people to the gas chamber what are you talking about what are you talking about and then right after that modern america is weird do you think you're freaking insane if you're a nazi of any variety let's not work together ever well i was using exaggeration for effect i acknowledge a tactic of equating everything to nazis in our modern political discourse is not helpful yes jim it's not helpful it's absolutely insane to clarify, definitely don't want to work with any actual Nazis. I don't know if any actual Nazis work in comics. They're too busy plotting how to kill people. I think they're doing other things, Jim. I don't think they're working in comic books. Uh, and I also don't want to work with anyone who's racist, homophobic, transphobic, anti-Semitic, xenophobic, or bigoted in any way. If you agree, great. If you don't, no need to ever read my work. I think the vast majority of people who work in comics or want to work in comics are actually uh, pretty welcoming, pretty pretty cool uh, class of people just because, you know, comics tends to attract the outsiders. And even those who lean conservative tend to be outsiders, and I think they tend to, they tend to be a little more accepting of people not like themselves. Comics, at one point, anyway, used to bring people together, and now... Uh, it's become yet another uh, political landmine. But again, this is just sort of the freaking weird stuff being said on Twitter. So, uh, you know, on both sides, people are getting sick of Twitter. Twitter stocks are declining. User numbers decline. Now, they did a, a huge purge of uh, bot accounts. Uh, I don't think they purged all the bots because if they purged all the bots, I think it would show that Twitter actually has far fewer actual users than what is uh, uh, being reported, and that would just damage their stock even more. That is a personal opinion. Twitter stock went down 12% in pre-market trading a day after investors dumped Facebook uh, the end of July. Um, yeah, it's uh, Twitter has been roundly criticized for allowing misinformation and other types of misbehavior to spread on its platform, but it's not all coming from one side. Twitter is, is definitely a free-for-all at this point. Uh, you know, but again, it's like, how do you, do you police that? Or do you just let free speech, uh, run its course? You know, that's not for me to decide that the only decision I, as a user, uh, have to make is how much of this am I willing to put up with? 
And um, from my point of view anyway, I think Twitter has been openly hostile to most conservatives or most people who are right of uh, far left, which is really unfortunate because it's not, it used to be the platform for everybody and it's, it's definitely catering to a certain, certain uh, demographic. And that demographic is going to be leaving uh, in droves apparently because of this situation with Alex Jones. If you look at the comments here with the Associated Press, you can see, you know, people are not happy. <laughs> Stop making stupid people famous. Um, you know, it's just this. It goes on and on and on. And people talking about how terrible uh, Twitter is from the left, which Twitter has you know gone out of its way to sort of cater to the left to people like Will Wheaton, who are basically saying they're going to leave on August 17th. You know, and then we have the talk of shadow banning, um, which has driven off some conservatives. So it's just, I mean, the whole thing is a mess. Twitter is a mess. So where does this leave uh, individuals who want to use Twitter? Uh, personally, I would say if you haven't invested anything in the platform, uh, now is not a good time to start. I think Twitter is absolutely absolutely on the decline and i think if we have a lot of users bail um on the 17th we'll see how that goes uh but i think it's it's definitely you know on both sides twitter's managed to piss off both sides of the aisle and i think that uh it's it's going to be a dead or essentially dead uh platform very very soon uh it just it, it's completely irrelevant so kind of uh curious to hear your thoughts that like i said we're sort of looking at some other options to keep in touch with everybody um you know maybe discord is an option for us uh, we do enjoy chatting with everybody on youtube we think youtube is still a pretty solid platform all things considered uh so what do you think comment below and let us know and uh please subscribe to the channel for more pop culture news and views as well as uh, art videos gaming videos and more on clownfish tv this has been neon later